H top. It's like watching a torrent down low, right. and if it's being observed, it, it won't happen. Oops. Much like any computer problem. <laughs> we are very much live. We're always <laughs> live, man. We're live. Close your yeah. eyes and listen. <laughs> We're still there. <laughs> hey, beautiful people. We're what's like going a bad on? Rush. <laughs> getting ready for another weekly Daily Wednesdays. Um, pretty decent Yay. show this week. Let me get over here to the yeah. free show. <laughs> What's going on, Hello. everyone? Middle of the week? Yeah. Hello, Artharen. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Pedro's been having fun with Chrome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was fun trying to watch a memory leak and then seeing it happens like, oh crap, that's the swap. Oh crap, oh crap, kill, 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 kill. <laughs> what it really does is, for me, it speaks volumes about, um, about your opinion on Katie, but that was the first thing you threw under the bus. You're like, yeah, it's Katie. I mean, there was a significant Katie update. <laughs> it's like, ah, mother, <laughs> really? <laughs> but no, to be fair, Katie was actually trying. It's like, okay, something's going on. I'm just going to go into panic mode. Everything at 100. It's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Chrome beta. <laughs> Chrome beta, it has a memory leak. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever ran into a memory leak with um, a browser or one significant enough that I noticed. I noticed with regular Chrome, this was years ago. Mm. Mm. That I did. Very similar, yes. Mm. <laughs> I did with Firefox, but that was years ago too. Hmm. I've relegated Firefox to managing our youtube channel <laughs> i've actually been using firefox as the browser and i just keep the others around to do things just because it, it's been working really well <laughs> <laughs> i don't have any problems with it um it's always nice to use a browser every now and then that isn't spoon feeding all of your data right back to google Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Don't worry, System D is going to replace that soon enough. <laughs> hey, oh, you're running GNOME now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's already absorbing, well, it's already absorbed all of GNOME, so. <laughs> well, think about it, man. It'll be awesome. I mean, you know, you, you'll be able to take down your box in one fell swoop. <laughs> No, it'll yeah. idle for like 90 seconds as it waits for um, that one process to finish. Optimism. Mm -hmm. Optimism. <laughs> you know, I will be right back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is taco clock. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't do it all the time, but sometimes I'll shut down. It's like, oh, hello, blinking cursor. Will you be my friend? <laughs> How long are you going to be there for today? <laughs> Three, one thousand, two, one thousand, one, one, pressing the power button. Hey man, journal file system, use it every now and then. It's like, um, KD Neon that I have installed, um, on El Chipo. It's like, yeah, it'll shut it down. Um, I think it, it sets the, uh, the timeout to 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, if the process doesn't quit in 10 seconds, it's just going to go down. Well, yeah, no, in Solus, it's whatever the system D default happens to be for that particular process, so... 90 seconds it is! That was... It's always a fun process, too, when you're, like, waiting on a process. Um, 20 seconds, 19, one minute. I'm like, what? No. Uh-uh. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this happens if I forget to um, unmount the NFS, the 10G link between the boxes. After I've cut one of the boxes off, which I probably, you know, should have done that a bit more gracefully, but it happens. Okay, well, let's get the... What do we have? We have your PS4 controller, a cup, and a towel. Always bring a towel. Yeah. Earl Grey is nice, but it stains the mug. <laughs> See, man. <laughs> This is part of my logic of just buying um, black mugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Strider. Str 
Strider, have you made it to... Where did he, Where was he going? Montana? Wyoming? Washington? Oregon? I know, um, Linux Zero was in Pennsylvania. <laughs> On purpose? <laughs> no, he was complaining about the trains being cold. <laughs> trains? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently he was on a train, it's like, trains in Pennsylvania are cold. <laughs> Dude. I wish we hadn't. There, there's no rail. In Athens. None. <laughs> Isn't that kind of like College Town? Shouldn't it have, like, Buses. at least a terminal station? Buzz. <laughs> everywhere. The university has its own bus system. Okay. Yeah. On top of the city <laughs> bus system. Mm -hmm. But you could understand, like, parts of the campus are like 40 clicks apart. So you played a little bit of The Indivisible. Did you like it? Yes, I did, actually. It's, um... It's gonna take some, my brain some getting used to. Oh, the it's like, okay, it's going to attack that one. character, yeah. going to have to hold down this button. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah, but my brain wasn't thinking about that. <laughs> it's got a lot going on. I, I was watching you play that, and I watched, uh, like, right up to the part to where... Uh, well, I watched the whole thing, but I played... Um, we had it, had it, like, a day before it got released, and... Um, mm -hmm. I get to the part where, like, the big two big guys, I ran into, like, two of them, and I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna die at this point anyway. Let me save you some time, game. And just early Yeah, it's on. like, oh, they have armor. You need to attack. You do, you do need to do the attack combos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like, oh, more than two hits, and they take the same amount of damage as they normally would, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm interested in that, because to me, that's a new mechanic for turn base. I'm like, well, maybe it'll irritate me. It's a bit more active than just yeah. sitting and waiting. <laughs> it is. It's like the, there's, there's a, a weird hybrid. It's either going to be really neat or it's going to fall on its face. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, all right, you're on the show now. <laughs> Man. Get a... Pack this in, and oh wait, ah, uh, I gotta go get my box from my monitor. Okay, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that right now. A teeny tiny box for the teeny tiny monitor. Thirteen point <laughs> five inch, bruh. Yeah, <laughs> which is two point five inches bigger than I wanted. <laughs> I know, this is the I mean, the that's probably ultimate. the size of the bezel. Dude. <laughs> no, dude. The bezel's like, meh. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's aluminium casing. It's very, I mean, it's well built. Metal buttons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it has to go on my desk. <laughs> so it, it's about how flat I can get it without just laying it perfectly flat. Fortunately, the viewing angle's really good for the IPS. Mm -hmm. Um vertically horizontal i was like this thing looks really good for 160. horizontal is bad <laughs> it's bad that screen gets from perfectly mm -hmm. like pitch black to nice mm -hmm. and gray if you know <laughs> it's like that's definitely the difference between you know you gotta make up for that price somewhere yeah and there's like three or four different kinds of IPS. And they mostly seem to use that one that's like AH IPS, which from side to side, it's great. You get like full almost 180. Mm -hmm. But like the top and the bottom of the screens, like if you tilt them, it's like, oh, hello. <laughs> TN displays like that. Uh, the hello, IPS Steve has been... on uh, <laughs> this is a bit like these. You, your monitors are exceptional. For the price. These were mm -hmm. like $120 new 90 years. And they're just like little ViewSonics, mm -hmm. but it, it even irritates me more knowing that they're such good monitors that never get used for anything. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, Arthur, yeah, I just be... got my uh, TwitchCon again because I, I 
Actually, I've been really enjoying this tumbler. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just refilled it. <laughs> but Probably I'll change my, my uh, mug next week. <laughs> Christmas gift for myself is going to be a like a 2560 by 1440 high refresh rate monitor. Just because I want to see how all that works. You're going to be one of those? And all right. For games, it's like, okay, so it's lower resolution than the UHD, so... That's why yeah. I like you, Pedro. You told me that, so now I got like two months to prepare stuff to give you static about about being one of those. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll have some. I'll bring some A material when that thing shows up. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be doing improv. See, I'll tell you. Here's the legitimate issue I have with 144p: are the people that I'm trying to help in like Discord and on reddit with obs because like but i gotta stream the 144 post like no no one cares dude <laughs> obs doesn't support it by all means capture the 1440p and Record then it. use the lanxos thing to 1080p they're done <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, then we have like you know 900p is legitimate if you're trying to do high action games on twitch i'd recommend that yeah, the true 16.9. <laughs> but if you want the ultimate like breakdown of that, you'd want your source video to be um, 720p upscaled to 900p. Yeah. <laughs> because <Yes>. maths. <laughs> it's actually upscaling the um, 720p and, you know, OBS does a good job of scaling. So yeah. yeah. Then you try to explain to people the difference between GPU scaling versus CPU scaling and when that takes place since I know uh. a lot about OBS. <laughs> but people will not listen. I'm trying to help you, man. <laughs> like I don't think it works like that way. So I'm I'm I'll tell you what you're gonna do. You're gonna go somewhere else, ask the same question, hope for confirmation bias. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Rohit, man. Apparently, Twitch streaming in Texas, a little behind today. 13 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Got a, got a little delay. To be fair, I only just got the notification, too, from the uh, Twitch app, so... You know, here's the that's thing. That's on the Twitch app. <laughs> the Twitch app, if you look in our, um... Like, Twitch dashboard, it will tell you... How many it sent out versus how many people um, tuned in with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like right on. Yeah, that's cool. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Matthew's uh, trying to post an emote. <laughs> <laughs> Does that actually show one. up on Twitch? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just have to sync them. <laughs> Don't worry, Bear. It's already uh, available for wide consumption. Yeah. Put it on YouTube so last night. I was getting ready mm -hmm. to wind down, cook dinner, and I'm like, Ah, that's what I forgot to do. All right, fine. <laughs> I started to try to like type everything and do it on a tablet. All right, fair enough. You need a computer for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did have the thought. I was like, you know, a laptop would be handy. <laughs> yeah. I noticed that it was like, I'm on the phone. It's like, ooh, that's a nice link to uh, get to the show notes. And by the time I get to the show notes, it's like, oh, it's already there. Okay, that was a lot of work for nothing. <laughs> mm. Google Docs on Android is pretty good. Yeah, it's just me and holding down things and waiting for, like, the little blip to then paste and copy. It's like, no, I want you to select the whole text, like, hit three times. No, not that word, the whole thing. <laughs> then round two starts where you've enlarged it. My pensions. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, I went to double click or triple uh, triple tap on something mm -hmm. and it increases like, no, I just want to select. Stop. <laughs> oh, man. It will fight you. <laughs> yeah, no, doing text 
stuff. Uh, blessed be the keyboard. <laughs> yeah. That, on my Nexus, I have to get the little... I hate to use it as a horrible keyboard, but it works. It's a little built into the folio. Yeah. I just fold it out. <laughs> See, there's screw That'd be entertaining. Let's try to do an entire week of show notes with only voice dictation. First pass. Oh, God. <laughs> And then we have to rate it on the show like it's written. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard enough to do it on mobile. <laughs> I don't know. Google for me just refuses uh, to recognize punctuation, even if I say it's like something, 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 comma, something, something. No, I didn't want you to write comma. Comma, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would just be da 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 comma. Oh, what? Comma? <laughs> it's like that, huh? Comma, 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 comma. Where's your god now, Google? Comma, comma. You know. I can be a simple creature. Comma, 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 chameleon. Oh, man. Okay. Um, uh, someone, someone has to have drawn the comma chameleon. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, not Karma Chameleon. Yes. <laughs> there you go. That looks uh, Sue's ish enough. <laughs> How about something that isn't a thousand by a thousand? All right, fine, whatever. A thousand by a thousand it is. <laughs> Hi, Rez. <laughs> yeah, there's the. Comma, 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 chameleon. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you found it, Pedro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Oh, they also did the coma one. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't coma, know about this. Coma, 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 chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> How about you, Jill? What mm. have you been doing? <laughs> oh boy. Uh, lots of school stuff this week. <laughs> I've got lots of students, which is really, really good. And I ended up staying an extra couple hours after class Monday, mm -hmm. uh, showing them how to run Linux. And so that was cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't have too much in the, what I'm doing this week because most of the stuff I'm going to be doing, I want to, I'll talk about next week. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was trying to think of something else to put in there. <laughs> I mean, the only thing I can put on there is a little magic, oh, magic brick <laughs> game that Nori brought me from Portugal. <laughs> oh, nice. Is that Tetris? <laughs> it has Tetris and it mm. has uh the that weird um version of Tetris with the in betweeny pieces including the one square piece. And yeah, it's uh really cheap stuff. <laughs> that she found like I used to have one of those when I was a kid <laughs> so I brought one for you. It's like, "All right, thanks." <laughs> Aww, that's those are fun. There, you have video <laughs> evidence of you saying that. You can put it back in the drawer. <laughs> Admittedly, when I started to play like the uh, fake Tetris, uh, it's like, oh, I kind of like this. Oh, now I get it. This is how people lost hours of their life. Gotcha. <laughs> Strider, quit trying to make me hungry before show. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Matthew, that's disgusting. <laughs> it was like Ven with his Rice Krispies uh, meat packages <laughs> last night. <laughs> you know, I'd be curious. Just a Reese's cup filled with bean and tomatoes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought Captain Tuna Fish might chime in on that. Like, oh. <laughs> it's got a lot of Omega-3, man. It's good for your brain. 
clearly I need to eat a hell of a lot more. <laughs> Oh yeah, Tesco's has got uh, like uh, all of the Halloween uh, stuff. As soon as you walk in, like the main uh, aisle, mm -hmm. like, huh? <laughs> Tis the time, man. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it is a season. I mean, we're, we're finally getting some fall. Yeah, it, that's yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> Temperature has actually come down. <laughs> Temperatures cut down the trees. I'm like, hey, look, we're on fire with different colors. And the leaves. It's like, oh, what's that? You'd like to see uh, which way is the paved way and which one is muddy mess that you're going to step on? Uh, no, it's just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think we can do a show. Yes. I think it'll be alright. We'll be able to pull it off. We'll make it happen. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Cool. I think. I will try it anyway. What up? <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes. <laughs> Record. Record. I can see things. I can see everything. Yay. Good deal. Hmm. Yeah. I'm hanging on for dear life. I'm, ad oh. I'm adjusting things with science to make sure I can reach them. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to maximize laziness, man. Come on. I don't want to lean up and touch that. Then need some portals in there. <laughs> science. <laughs> okay, we're done. We I so abused a portal to the bathroom. <laughs> no. <laughs> and welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, Hi. take that midweek break, talk about the things that we found going on in the world of Linux. And then that's Jill. That's Pedro and Biopowers mm. Combined. Dubstep <laughs> music at the intro. Don't you love that? I do, man. It's awesome. So, what's new with everyone, Pedro? Before we went live, uh, you, you were uh, showing everybody that like fancy hot video game. Yes, it's... Um... One of those so uh, old fake Tetris machines. It's the Magic Brick game. And it's, yeah, it's got, they claim, the box anyway, says that it's mm -hmm. got like six games in one. Yeah, six in one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you, do you ever think it's about that mostly... when you see, uh, like, have you seen the picture of, like, that's not the Sony PlayStation, it's like the phony PlayStation. I've always wanted to see Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the PolyStation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's kind of like that. But yeah, it's mostly like Tetris and Tetris-like games, falling blocks, uh, including that fake Tetris one with like the um, <laughs> the single uh, square pieces and the three um, squares along um, straight lines. It's like, huh. It, it's actually kind of fun. <laughs> I'm easily Those amused. Those are fun. Oh, right? <laughs> I like old school little handhelds. Those are so fun. Oh, damn. <laughs> What's up, Joe? <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I have actually a lot going on in the world of Linux, but I'll have to let everyone know next week, including a few surprises. So that'll that'll be awesome. It's stuff I'm working on <laughs> and stuff that's happening. <laughs> right on, right Yay. on. Over here, I'm playing around with a... Uh, if you watch the show on Saturday, I left the box. I got up to go get the box, left the box. Um, a USB-C, like, 13-inch monitor that we're going to be using to... Um, Bring it on guest. That's finally happening. And uh, stay tuned. Yay. <laughs> Saturday. That's going to get a run. But, you know, I was curious, man, because I have that USB-C port on the NVIDIA 26. And I was like, can I just plug this under Linux and it works? And it did. So 
Good on that. Ended up having to plug an HDMI cable in it at the end of the day, unfortunately, because XFCE's got a problem with some things, and I'm not afraid to admit mm. it. I knew I was probably <laughs> going to run into that issue, but um, good times. Good times. So, Pedro, the best desktop available on Linux is <laughs> getting Arguable. updated. Come on, man. Don't hate. <laughs> Don't hate. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's GNOME 334, and a uh, new version's already out. Uh, Solus actually got it pretty early, but I still haven't been arsed to actually give it a shot. But the news here is that uh, GNOME 334 is now managed entirely via SystemD. Yes, uh, Dbus still uh, controls some stuff, but that stuff uh, is still being controlled by SystemD proper. So basically, you have... If you've ever wondered what uh, system D that or the system D distribution would be, pick any distro that runs GNOME 334 and have a look for yourself because that's going to be the future, whether we like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Very awesome. So, um, <laughs> what's what? <laughs> So what's cool about this is now that SystemD is managing GNOME 3.34, hardware components can be sandboxed for greater security, which is actually really, really awesome. And services can now be shut down and restarted depending on what hardware is or isn't present, which is actually really nice. It helps with memory overhead and whatnot. And, you know, I... It was, we kind of saw this coming, so this this actually makes sense. <laughs> and uh, thanks again to our Theron and chat for submitting this. This was awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's dumb. Mm -hmm. you, you kind of expect yeah. this. So, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's no <It's> honestly <laughs> it's like well, it, the more yeah i i kind of hope that uh system d will actually make it or mm. not interfere enough i guess is where i'm going with this it's like just let the uh desktop environment do its own thing and see how that goes uh, yeah. We, we need one cohesive stack so when something goes wrong, all of it goes wrong. That'll help attract Windows users. They're like, oh, I'm used to this. <laughs> I am used to the chain reaction of nope. <laughs> <laughs> it is good to see. Yeah, but definitely. On the topic mm -hmm. of Microsoft. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. So, um, <laughs> Linus Thorvalds, you may know him as a granddaddy Linux himself. And when posed the questions like, what do you think about uh, Microsoft basically buying their way into Linux? And uh, yeah, people were saying, it's like, yeah, Microsoft is wolf in sheep's clothing and they will wreck Linux. And Torvalds basically said, um, well, as far as we can tell from the kernel side, it's actually a good thing. There's more money coming in. There's more developers coming in. There's more uh, work getting done. Uh, there's a lot of, um, sure, uh, whenever a new company, it's one of the examples that he brings, uh, whenever a new company joins the, uh, the Linux Foundation, they have their own ideas and their own agendas that they're going to try and push. But in that respect, Microsoft is no different than any of the others that have were already a part of the Linux Foundation. So as far as he and the rest of the kernel team are concerned, it's like, yeah, it's cool. And uh, you also mentioned the uh, the XFAT patent issue uh, mm -hmm. that that was one of the uh, questions they brought up. It's like, yeah, they they dropped that patent. Uh, they made the patent available, and supposedly they're not going to be suing anyone else over it. I and that know. was my last. That was a sad day so. for you, man. You had to give up one of your little anger gems. You're like, oh. yeah, that, oh, that, that yeah. was like the last gripe. So much like Linus, I'm just going to. Wait and see. Well, I'm definitely thinking mm -hmm. about it. Let me see. Linus, are you getting <laughs> soft in your old age? Come on. Come on, man. Yes. What happened to the NVIDIA Linus that I keep behind me? He's my spirit animal. 2012 uh, was long ago. <laughs> dude, it's either that or parts of Microsoft, legitimately, some might even call them the smart parts of Redmond, are legit trying to change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, for everyone out there worried, uh, that is worried about this, um, remember that Linux is protected by the GPL2 open source licensing. So no single company can control it, not even Microsoft. 
And in fact, Linux is the driving force for most tech companies whose developers have to work on the Linux kernel in a collaborative and transparent way. And now, yes, even Microsoft has to bow down to the Penguin. Our Penguin army is marching forward. And, you know, it's actually quite the reverse. Uh, Microsoft is like 50% Linux now. So, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're the one taking that, them over. <laughs> <laughs> we want to take a look at what Torvalds actually said, man. He rolled out yeah. the whole anti-Microsoft thing was sometimes funny as a joke, but not really. I, good, mm -hmm. I'm glad you threw that in, Lightus, because like, you didn't say it funny <laughs> as a joke. Yeah. Um, they're much friendlier. I talk to Microsoft engineers at various conferences and feel like, yes, they have changed and the engineers are happy and they're like, really happy working on Linux. So I completely dismissed all the answers. See, I don't believe that a minute, but <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a while, man. When you have like two plus decades of a company that genuinely was trying to snuff this out, even though they've rolled over turns like, oh, okay, maybe we're not going to do this anymore. Maybe, maybe it's going to be a thing and we're not going to fight it. Because you do have to consider, like, I wouldn't be surprised by 2021 that in its own way, Microsoft will be the largest distributor of Linux with WSL. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when you think and about Azure it like is pretty big in the cloud, yeah. and that's built on Linux. Let's make it a money, man. And <laughs> at the end of the day, the kernel doesn't care who you work for. As long as yep. the code gets done, yep. it gets fixed. Exactly. So I can't. Mm -hmm hate on that part and we are still talking about a company that decided there you go. we all had to step back was it? they're using chromium for their new browser like what yes <laughs> i i still don't know i i'm curious to see how that boils out mm -hmm. twitter never heard mm -hmm. of it tell me about it <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so uh, I found this. This is really cool. Cobbird is a new Twitter client for Linux and is a fork of Corebird. Yeah, you know, I had just started using the original Corebird Twitter client when I started doing LWW, and then it ceased to function. So, <laughs> you know, I was happy when I found the newly developed uh, Cobbird. And um, as other Twitter clients go, it, it, it doesn't have complete functionality uh, because of the way the Twitter API works. But I love um, Cobbird, but my biggest complaint is that its notification stream is mentions only, not likes, follows, and so on. So that was my biggest complaint. But other than that, other than that you have to refresh it every few minutes for new to see new tweets. And that's not a big deal to me um, because some other third party uh, Twitter apps that I've been using on Android do the same thing. And I'm just, I was really happy when I came across this and I want more development to continue on Cobbert because we need a good Twitter client for Linux. <laughs> Very def most definitely. But I worry, of course, because Twitter will change things and, the, and it w might break things again. So we'll see. Hopefully the developers will be able to continue to plow on this project and keep those APIs up to date. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's definitely the big a thing. one because yeah, Cobbard, like you said, it stopped working because Twitter changed its API. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, this is too much trouble. We're just not going to bother. And uh, now Cobbard is uh, doing the same that Corbert did and at least they have the same functionality, or so they claim, the um, that Corbird had. So all of that uh, basic stuff is there. But the goal here is to expand. Mm -hmm. And like Joel yeah. already mentioned, there are a couple of issues that need work, like the automatically refreshing feed, the notifications feed actually showing you all the notifications instead of just the mentions. Uh, and at this point, I think the best um, Twitter client on Linux is still TweetDeck because it's <laughs> yeah. there, it's on the browser, mm -hmm. it does all the things like, eh, that, that's pretty good. That's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I share those feels, man, because yeah. <laughs> with TweetDeck, <laughs> one of the things that I like to have it on a dedicated screen with all of my searches and it auto refreshes. Remember when Google yeah. Plus used to do that too? Wasn't that? Yeah. Bad? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it could just Aww. roll by and it required no interaction and I could scroll back. This, I can't say it looks interesting because neither the article or the GitHub page have a screenshot of it. So you might yeah. want to throw that in. 
eventually. <laughs> a dedicated desktop app. I'm just not feeling it on that. And what I got to say is like Twitter's Russian roulette because you can think of it. I think I went through like three <laughs> unofficial Twitter clients because you know what Twitter, they were all better than the one that you had. Um, yeah. <laughs> and the way Twitter did it, you could get an access token up to a certain amount. It used to just be a free for all. It was a wonderful time. Then Twitter's like, we need to control all this. So uh -huh. yeah, I, I, I use the official Twitter client now begrudgingly, but on mobile, but on the desktop, yeah, yeah. I think tweet deck, it depends your use yep. case. If you're just checking in, checking tweets, man, twitter.com is good enough. I don't know where I'm at with a standalone. There's nothing against it. It's, I don't know. I, I would never. It go would need alone. to be. Yeah, it would have it would to do something to more, like, right? Tweet deck levels of functionality to be useful. That mm -hmm. 100%. So, mm -hmm. so all right. Are we so, not, uh, more gnomes. Yeah. Jeez, you're just you're gonna have to get a gnome T-shirt <laughs> and a gnome cup. Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> well, this isn't just about gnome. This is more about Solus and uh, their new. Um, development mm -hmm. uh and well they kind of needed the new gnome bits to expand the functionality on budgie which was like the big selling point of solus back in the day and budgie it's currently up to version 10.5.1 and it makes use of a lot of the stuff that gnome 334 introduces like the new gtk stuff so and quite a bunch of stuff that uh, joshua strobel has been working on the Big focus, yeah, the, the big focus was just to get GNOME in place and working as well as it could so they could continue working on Budgie, which is why Solus was one of the first distros. As soon as GNOME 334 came out, it's like, boom, there, it's in, mm -hmm. go. And yeah, the, they, they've also been uh, keeping up uh, work in KD, and of course, Mate is also one of their supported um, desktop environments, so that's kept very regularly up to date as well. But yeah, the, the big one here is all the GTK3 stuff for the gnome and budgie aficionados out there. Hmm. Yeah, and you know, it, it they introduced actually a lot of new features also to budgie 10.5.1. Uh, mm -hmm. Introduced uh, hinting and anti-aliasing um, settings in the fonts section of the budgie desktop settings. And I noticed that, you know, it, it, immediately that 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 was always an issue because the when you'd uh, zoom in or if you had an ultra hd display they'd be fuzzy so this will go a long way to making those much the fonts much more crisp crisper and um as pedro was saying budgie uh, budgie 10.5.1 provides support for several gnome stack releases including gnome 3.30 3.32 and 3.34 and this is actually really significant because this allows a greater number of users to get updates which which has been an issue so that's been really good and I really had fun uh, watching Joshua Strobel the Solus project lead fi fix bugs and integrate the latest gnome updates and solus live on his twitch channel i watched that for probably about four or five hours and interacted with him in chat it was it was really fascinating and really amazing actually <laughs> so that that's was really, really cool. good to see that mm -hmm. the solus project is still able to just keep rolling on yeah they're amazing yeah. they're yeah. amazing and, you know, as much as I can harp on some of the issues that have cropped up and the lack of certain uh, oh, packages. Yeah, that's, that's right. You got rid of Solus, right? You uninstalled it. Um, came very close to. Pedro but needed then to complain on the, the internet to somebody to <laughs> vent his frustration. Aww. He had no intention of actually getting rid of it because he loves it. I, I, I kind of do. Because, yeah, yeah, it's a Linux distro that isn't based on Ubuntu, it isn't based on Red Hat or Fedora or anything. It's not based on mm -hmm. anything. It was built from the ground up to be its own thing. And yes, the package selection is limited in the rep in the repos, but that allows a very small team to deliver a very, very nice operating system. Yes. I like E. <laughs> Glad yeah. it's working. We love Solus. Updates. <laughs> Flatpak. Uh, <laughs> development is not standing still. No, it is not. Um... This is from going, what is it? Yeah, the GNOME blog. All this inner show notes. Yep. Go check that out after the fact. Uh, just a lot of quality of life stuff. I mean, we're going to be seeing parental controls, disk space checks. Uh, they're going to implement a system for either purchasing or donating. That's, That's really neat. Yeah. And you're also going to get the ability to mass updates. 
So when something needs updating, it's like, hey, man, I'm just going to do that for you. So they'll stew a foo. Look that up, kids. I mean, don't. <laughs> um, there's lots and lots of quality of life features planned for future. And I, I really like to see that. So because if, if, if you held a loaded water gun to my head and said, pick one. And it's like, if I have to, I'm like, yes, you have to. And I'm going to pick Flatback. Uh, my favorite thing about uh, Black oh, no. Max is yeah. that, yeah, <laughs> uh, is that they don't um, put this in the notes. <laughs> they're uh, they don't create that little stupid lowercase folder right in the middle of my home folder. Yeah, I'm really happy about that. Yay! <laughs> you know that little folder was the best twenty pound uh, dare I, I've ever had in my entire <laughs> life, like, hands down. Doesn't even need to be there. <laughs> at this point, it, at this point, it's principle. At this point, I'm going to keep not using snaps. Oh man! <laughs> don't on <eat> snaps. <laughs> yeah, app images do the same as well. They're nice and self-contained. <laughs> yes, so. actually self-contained. Go figure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But what's this is cool and Flatpak development is now open. They're you know are looking for contributions from the community and would love to hear from you. So that's that's how a lot of this development has occurred is because of the users out there. So very important. I think that's really really neat. <laughs> Fedora thirty one thirty two a bit. I six eighty six is eighty sixth man. Go look up the origin of that word. I found it up. Uh... It's a transitive verb, if you're wondering. Uh, <laughs> pretty interesting read, as I found out. But yeah. uh, we knew this was coming. And this is I'm, I'm going to tag that in a minute because I'm like, yeah, they finally did it for the thing. And I386 support, it's going away. But what do you do if you're running 32-bit um, <laughs> on your computer? <laughs> But, you know, <laughs> roughly until June of 2020. So that's going to be at the end of uh, the four, uh, Fedora 30 life cycle. And your upgrade path is going to be to buy a CPU made in the last decade and some change, man. I know. That's the thing. But this is for the better. This is going to happen across all distributions except for get off my lawn OS whenever that comes out. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to say this because I've definitely seen on my Twitter um, there's someone making the point of you know i think this is unfair fedora is dropping i386 support where's the outrage that everyone had when ubuntu announced that they were dropping i386 support um because you know the internet went full metal like omg wtf bbq on that and i was like mm -hmm. really i was right there with you i was with the wine team I'm like what let me <laughs> tell you why one word <laughs> surprise because that's how canonical did it yeah like i said we're talking about this again and they're finally getting into it that's really genuinely the only difference i was like yeah. so when are you implementing mm -hmm. this next week i mean not really next week but the equivalent of <laughs> yeah the next version yeah. and with fedora at least they specifically said on the first announcement yes we're going to be uh, dropping the i686 repos, but you will still be able to get the multi-libs, the 32-bit mm -hmm. libraries for 64-bit operating systems, in the repo, mm -hmm. the 64-bit repo. We're just going to scrap the 32-bit repo, and everything that <laughs> requires 32-bit multi-lib, it's still going to have it. it. It's good that you pointed yeah. that out, because exactly. yeah, I'm thinking <laughs> when I say that, yeah, multi-arch is still going to be around. Yeah. yeah, and Ubuntu, the, the, their thing was no multi arch, no multi lib. They were going <laughs> nothing. Yeah. They were just completely <laughs> drop. And as yeah. I yeah. said on the show, I was like, I kind of respect that. Somebody's got to do it at some yeah. point. But, yeah, uh, no. but yeah, Fedora straight. They came out and straight up said, "It's like, no, we're going to keep multi lib. That's still going to be mm -hmm. a bit of functionality that we're going to maintain. Mm -hmm. So as long as I can play my video games." I'm yes. <laughs> Buy yes. a PlayStation 5. Come on, man. Or Switch. Switch is run Linux. <laughs> At that point, I'd rather buy a Stadia. <laughs> How do you buy a Stadia? You mean the controller? You buy the controller with a little thingy? No, the controller <laughs> the is the thingy. Chromecast. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah.
There we go. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, Odor mm -hmm. just went, hey, Dynafire. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My people need me. Peace. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. It's, like, it's going too smooth, man. <laughs> was it? Was it really? <laughs> hey, man. Build redundant systems, kids, so you can recover quick. In three, yes. <laughs> So coming up next, uh, something that I get to play with, and Jill, you get to play with. I think Pedro's even opened one at one point. It was on a Tuesday. Yeah. Um, video <laughs> editing. Yeah. So this is an article about the best free video editing software on Linux. And but uh, but it brings out some some very in 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 <laughs> one of the most important uh video editors out there under open source, uh, which of course is uh, Kaden Live. And uh, um, only three of the eight ed video editors listed uh, work on Linux, OpenShot, DaVinci Resolve, and Shotcut. And I just, I can't believe that Kaden Live was left out. <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> and there's actually another article from a few months ago that has a really a great list of all the video editing software on Linux um, at its FOSS. And um, I also really love Flowblade, Flowblade, Cinelera, and the new Olive Video Editor. So those were uh, several of the video editors that did not make the cut in in this article. <laughs> FOSS bites. <laughs> Interesting. Yes, the floss <laughs> is just for show. Yeah. They kind of threw that out there. And I wanted to throw this in the um, notes because <laughs> the universal recommendation was open shot, which I would. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> However, to follow on that, Katie and Live is definitely not on the list. So I'm just going yeah. to personally declare that entire list invalid. Um, yes. I don't know if somebody had a word. <laughs> count they had to reach and they use that but i'm going to say that kde and live is the multi-purpose thing i mean you can use it on the yeah. windows um and it's definitely mm -hmm. available on linux multiple versions and you can get it as an app image and it's easy enough to walk in and play with and you're like i need to edit my pedro video because we all have pedro videos and <laughs> you can do it I'm put sorry. it to youtube it's a piece <laughs> of cake then that's what you should mm -hmm. use Open shots, man. I, I'm coming from somebody. The first 130 weeks we did Linux Gamecast, I was using Open Shot, and I was like, "This thing works. Mm -hmm. It was simple. It was easy because I didn't need an advanced editor because I do all the stuff live to tape, all that yeah. bit. So I just needed to chop ins and tie stuff together. Worked great for that. Then version two happened. Then it didn't happen. Then years. Maybe it's in a better spot at this point. It's just too far behind for me to. Uh, Recommend it anyway. And really, we all should be running DaVinci Resolve because I'm DaVinci Resolve show. Hi, Black Magic, call me. Uh, <laughs> that That's definitely a pro level thing. Also, like Lightworks, I mean, if you don't yeah. like somebody, go ahead and put that on their box. And mm -hmm. Yeah, and go into it and don't tell them how to get out. <laughs> it's not too bad. Aww. More on that in the feedback section, but... Uh, the, that, yeah, that's an interesting list, yeah. man. Just to omit yeah. like bites. Now I'd I heard of Foss bites and their um, not so stellar reputation with the Linux community in general, by posting a list of free video editors, <laughs> and not all of them being free software, despite having Foss exactly. in the name. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that. I, I can see why now. Now I can certainly see why. Because <laughs> it's like the Apple, what was it? The um, Apple iMovie? Yeah. Really? Really? Yeah. Hey, man, <laughs> it works on a operating system. Yes, the one. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next week when Lex Incast only covers the latest Windows releases. Uh, <laughs> darn. Uh, Got to talk about this got to talk about this um i'm going to talk oh about this mm, oh boy more in detail <laughs> over on the uh ubuntu blog over at canonical alan alan wrote a thing man he's like easy linux game streaming on obs and it, it's short and it's sweet and it's technically to a point um i would argue the point itself but this walks through apparently doing this i mean this is a thousand yard overhead view to which 
I read through it. I was like, oh, that's good. Somebody needs to make this. And then I read it. It's like, that's just going <laughs> to confuse people. And I, I, I say that as somebody who's on ROBS and the support channel <laughs> in OBS on their Discord, doing my best to watch out for the Linux folks, trying to get more people using it. Don't stream on a laptop. Hey. <laughs> hey let's get started if you must stream on a laptop say you have one that is powerful enough to do this like w would you stream on your um z on laptop pedro do you think you could pull uh, it, it off threads from? with the nvidia quadro yeah. yeah if it was something really light sure yeah. really mm -hmm. really light we're talking like 2001 game like never winter nights which I actually did stream on a laptop mm. go look that stream up <laughs> 720p <laughs> so we're talking about that if you have a laptop if you must if you can do it because i respect it it's like i don't have a billion dollars <laughs> to build something use what you have to a point some point diminishing returns is going to kick in if you stream it on a laptop don't use wi-fi don't believe me go go put your log into the obs logifier big warning right there at first it's like problems wi-fi it's good for receiving you're not good at broadcasting mm -hmm. get an ethernet dongle mm -hmm. or cheap usb um if you're going to be on a laptop plug it into the mains so it's not in any type of power save mode period and the one thing i did see and i'm not picking on you alan because it's good somebody did this at least i was like hey here's some idea how to do this never use amd or intel based encoding it's junk it's mm -hmm. bad <laughs> This is not debatable unless you're like, hey, I'd like to use it for local recording because you have to feed it a ridiculous bit rate to even get like, yeah, and it's like, I guess that doesn't look horrible. Don't do that. Uh, use your CPU and go back to like probably why you shouldn't be doing this on a laptop. And when it comes to installing OBS, don't use a flat pack. Don't use an app image. Don't use a snap. Install it. If you're on Ubuntu, <laughs> there's a PPA for that from OBS. Stick with it because it works and I will be able to troubleshoot your problem. But maybe I want to install the Linux browser, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's an issue. Um, one of the major issues reported on the GitHub page was the OBS uh, Linux browser plugin is included with the snap, but seg faults when adding a Linux browser source. So... <laughs> That's no good. <laughs> no, and, no, you know, it's not. That, that, that's like one of the major features a lot of the you know those that stream of us who stream on Linux use. <laughs> so, and I think if if uh, we tried to use it here at Linux Gamecast, Ven Studio would explode. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think now. the Ven Studio would explode. I think Ven would explode. When it's Venn like, would, no, no, just kill me now. <laughs> just, just, yeah, no. There we go. <laughs> yeah, because we, we need bare metal for all this stuff we're doing here. <laughs> so, yeah. And, you know, the app image of OBS does actually run quite well, uh, but I wouldn't use it in production. And so I wouldn't be using the Snap in production either, unless I was just streaming a, a game that doesn't, you know, that doesn't take up much memory and that's all you need is one one screen <laughs> <laughs> i tried it and, and um, go, go ahead go ahead i i, I was just gonna say i kind of gave up when uh Popey is like yeah you should use the snap and mm -hmm. use um hardware encoding for intel via the ffmpeg va api it's like uh. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Unless you went through the trouble and it comes out of the box with quick sync enabled in Ubuntu, which I don't think it does, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, does he uh, show to enable it, doesn't he? No, no, he doesn't. Mm. It, it, nowhere mm. in the list does he show uh, the quick sync bits because mm. I went through that trouble of enabling quick sync on Linux. It requires a lot of accepting uh, Intel terms of service. So that's my reasoning as to why that, that mm, yeah. <laughs> hmm. it's probably doing some form of hardware acceleration on the Intel um, GPU, but it's not quick sync and quick sync. Mm -hmm. It gets the job done. It's still not going to be NVENC with a, a 20 series graphics card. Good, but it is better. I tried um, with uh, what was it? Uh, the 19, what's on Ubuntu? The previous version of Ubuntu before I went over to Fedora and then I went, ended up on Debian. The, like, 
their FFmpeg that they shipped uh, didn't have NV encode support, but the Snap mm-hmm. did. And I was like, you know what? I, I don't like talking negative about anything, especially something that I haven't used. So I tried that and I was like, you know what? Well, maybe we can make this to be a good you know, data point. We're like, hey, this is, how did I install plugins? Question mark. Got to have plugins because <laughs> Linux browser doesn't ship. And I honestly never could. I tried, I found a way with a flat pack version of OBS to make that work, but it was crash tastic and it hung on me. Like after I'd set up some scenes, I was like, okay, we're just going back. Debian, Debian multimedia, enable that repo, mm-hmm. install OBS, FFmpeg's <laughs> already done with NV encode. I didn't have to build anything, but yep. probably next week I'll have a video about building OBS for the latest and greatest. So you too cool. can build your own little <laughs> containerized version. Uh, we'll call it a, I don't know, a Venn container. It's just a folder in your home directory <laughs> that has everything. <laughs> so you just run it from there and then you can run OBS, whatever you have um, on your operating system. It's kind of brilliant. It's kind of fun. Uh, hardware encoding. Let's stay on that. Yes. And this mm-hmm. one comes from Foxy. Jill, yeah, what is Foxy so talking? Oh. Yeah, (laughs) it's Foxy. (laughs) Yes, so this is awesome. Um, NVIDIA has joined the Blender Foundation Development Fund at the patron level. Yay! And now NVIDIA joins Epic Games at at that uh, patron level. And that's 120K or more a year. That's amazing. That will allow for two more developers to work on core Blender development and keep the NVIDIA GPU rendering well supported and even faster in the future. And yes, thank you, M Fox Dog, for finding that tweet. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, this is took them amazing. long enough. Yeah, uh, I also like <laughs> to see the uh, the comments. Everyone's like, uh, "Where's the Vulcan? We want some yes. Vulcan bits. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> Give us the coming. Vulcan. <laughs> <laughs> that's coming. They had uh, Blender developers have been working on that. So <laughs> yeah, it's the biggest interesting. Um... I don't know if it's made into main yet, but they are definitely working with uh, support for tensor cores on mm-hmm. NVIDIA hardware yeah. for your ray tracing. To some extent, I mean, it, it, it's outside of my pay grade, but I'm like, hey, that's getting built in. And yes, yes, I know. You're like, that's proprietary, but it's still going to be supported, which is good. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I, I didn't buy an Kuda RTX card is there. for, um, yeah. well, the latest version finally works with the 20 series card. So I, I didn't get an NVIDIA card because it had tensor cores, man. I don't think anyone really did, but you can at least put them to use in a very, very yeah. fun, entertaining type way. Yes. And that is great news for Blender. We've been talking Yay. about great news for um, <laughs> Godot. I mean, it's great. Fantastic. Because doing mm-hmm. this stuff is expensive. Speaking of that, commercial time, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Nay, yes. not for a mattress. No, we're not trying to sell you a levitating soup bowl. We're trying to sell uh, us. Uh, if you like what we do and you want to support it, you're like, hey, man, these yahoos are worth like four quarters a week. You can do that over at patreon.com forward slash letting scheme cast. We got Libra pay. We got a store with shirts in it. I know it's terrifying. PayPal, wish list, bitcoins, and a bunch of affiliate links. Thank each and every one of you for making this possible. Mm-hmm. It's a fun experiment we get to do. It'd be awesome uh, for all of our Patreons. If you like chatting with us during the week, you're like, where are you guys at the We have a Discord set up just for you. We're in there. We're talking, usually talking smack, but it's a pretty chill place, except for weird pictures of spaghetti Reese's pieces. and um, With beans. With beans. You say that like it's a, <laughs> not a horrible piece of nightmare imagery that'll be forever etched into your retinas and your gray matter. I'm like, no. You know what? On your deathbed, throw that up. Reese's Pieces, beans. Eh. <laughs> beans and tomato sauce, Reese's Pieces. <laughs> you, you can definitely do that. Uh, thanks, everybody. That helps us pay the bills. And, oh, man, fun stuff. Keeps us going. Yes, yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. And Anja, mm-hmm. what a command. I don't know what you did, man. That's on you, Rohit. That's on you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's no. get in to a slice of pie. Oh, yes. that's cool. Good picture, Ben. <laughs> so Raspberry Pi enthusiast George Godinez makes the first low-profile Raspberry Pi 4 cooler. It's, it's really neat looking. It has a direct touch heat pipe, which is encased in thermally conductive resin with the bottom exposed to make contact with the Raspberry Pi 4. 
And one of the 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 uh, most significant things about this heat pipe is that this cooling option is low profile and will accommodate most Pi 4 hats, which is a big issue because a lot of the cooling options out there do not do not accommodate the the Pi extra goodies on top, the hats. So that that was uh, very important. And it's made of aluminum and it looks really cool actually. <laughs> heat pipe for a raspberry pi the, that's actually a very good point jill that's something that i didn't think about at all because i saw it's like okay so how much does that cost that's 20 bucks okay uh for a completely passive <laughs> just the one heat pipe and the aluminum fins it's like um that's almost the same <laughs> money that you would pay for that td tiny uh tower Aww. cooler that we talked about <laughs> mm -hmm. this, and at least that one has a fan it, does yes. some active cooling and it also has a heat pipe uh going directly over the soc but yeah that, that's a very good point jill uh with that tower cooler mm -hmm. hats are kind of a no-go <laughs> yeah. so yeah I, I see the point <laughs> <laughs> i always like when i read direct contact heat pipes because i think i, I my i visualize them direct <laughs> contact and I'm like oh it's just sitting over here it's near osmosis a cooling but i know what they mean right? <laughs> yeah yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> that's kind of fun and pedro you are correct you'd have to put some type of one would assume then again mm -hmm. it might be able to get away with passive i mean it's going to be cooler than nothing period absolutely oh, yes. i mean if uh that td tiny fan on that tower cooler cuts the temperature in half mm -hmm. Uh, then I'm guessing this one, it, it may not be as good, but it's since the like contact area is bigger and it actually targets more of the um, the components on the PCB, it might help with dissipation considerably. And if you have a case that mm -hmm. has a teeny tiny fan that goes on top of that, that will help even more. So what, that what might if work. I put my hair dryer on it and hold down the cold button. <laughs> uh, You'll probably melt it. <laughs> the cool button? Oh, the cool button. No. no. <laughs> it should be fine. Yeah, yeah man. Bit loud, button. but fine. <laughs> it's got little sunglasses and leather coat. Weird, man. All right. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Microbiotics. But now what you're well, thinking. Well, uh, my microscopies. Or <laughs> microscopies. Or microscopy? Something like that. Oh, right. Someone Dr. put a raspberry pi on top of a microscope before I give myself a... Uh, some kind of brain <laughs> condition of trying to spell me. that yeah. uh microscopy yeah that could work yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh but yeah it is exactly uh what it says it is an old um mm. an old um microscope that martin tethered uh basically took the top apart and shoved the raspberry pi camera in there with a little adapter for the lenses and the Raspberry Pi then becomes a digital um, output for the um, for the microscope itself, and you can see there's a video there, and they go through like all the bits uh, in the software with what you can do. It's like, okay, that the, the software still needs a little bit of work because it's not a very well integrated looking experience. It just boots into the the regular. Um, Raspbian desktop, and then you have to start all the software by hand, and it's not very uh, touch friendly. So yeah, it needs it needs a little bit of work on the um, on the software side. But I'd say the hardware, he nailed it. He absolutely nailed it. That's exactly the kind of prototype slash DIY mm -hmm. stuff that's useful and really neat that I kind of like to see. So yeah, good job there, Martin. Very very nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do kids do that? I remember getting a microscope as a child. So a digital microscope for the price of a Raspberry Pi and the uh, yeah. the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what it. See, even adult me wouldn't. That'd be my problem. Then then I'd like start breaking things because I'd be looking for things to put under it. <laughs> <laughs> well, chances are you not everyone has a uh, destructive mentality. It's not destructive, <laughs> it's science. Shut up. <laughs> science isn't about why, it's about why it's not. About, why not? Cave Johnson. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, maybe you have, you're a mad scientist yourself and you want to get in touch with us. Tell us about projects that you're working on or something that you've seen, and it's amazing. 
or more likely than not, maybe we got something wrong. We did, apparently. Uh, stay tuned for that. How do you do that carrier pigeon I've heard? You can totally uh, record a video of yourself, put it in a flash drive, attach it to a carrier put it pigeon, in the pigeon, and wait, no, shoot it monster. away. <laughs> don't, don't put it in the pigeon. You kind of need it to fly afterwards. <laughs> that explains well, that weird it, it might be... package. <laughs> it might be well, yeah. faster than snail mail. <laughs> Borderline. Borderline. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, best way to do it is to go to linuxgamecast.com, you hit the contact button and fill out the forum. Just make sure you pick LWDW from the show selection box and uh, fill out the rest of the form. It's very easy, very simple, very self-explanatory. You can even send some hate mail for that Saturday show, What We Do. Wow, I went for call, and... call, call, but it's like car, call. That would work too, unfortunately. Car, call. A little darker. Car, call. Car, call. Car, call. Car, call. Don't finish this sentence. <laughs> 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 but yeah it is um it's the best way to do it you can also uh leave us a comment on youtube uh i check on those regularly enough uh the he does patreons, he doesn't post them in the show notes i do <laughs> mostly because the ones from last week it's like okay none of these are really like questions that we didn't answer totally in the show got looking at the you show notes this week from a youtube comment <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got the one? All right. <laughs> but yeah, do like uh, these fine folks did, and uh, you'll get your uh, bit of feedback featured right here. Maybe right nice, now. Baby. Yeah. Let's go with Phyllis, man. Um, <laughs> sign with her. Phyllis is like, yo, check this out. We can all say cinema mm -hmm. for a movie mm -hmm. as sign ma. Do the same <laughs> for sign ma er a. <laughs> As sign Lyra. Okay. Stability is so important. No one wants to lose work for sign Lyra. Good. <laughs> provides <laughs> that. <laughs> yes. Steep learning curve, but there's help and getting started to it. Now, this, this was from a minute ago, but somebody got around to finally watching that. Yeah. What we were talking about. This is another. This is that nonlinear video editor that you can leave out of the open source list, and everybody's like, "Yeah, it's cool. Don't worry about it." <laughs> oh, no, Be it works great now. Because <laughs> it is a just from the basic confusion of which one should I get. It's like, yeah, you need to research that. <laughs> yeah. Um, followed by a mid '90s, uh, an interface that makes a mid '90s like uh, program on Irix. Uh, look very <laughs> user friendly and intuitive, man. Oh, you don't like that turquoise and, and orange. No, I'm talking about the usability and functionality of his rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> you can learn a new interface and you, uh, a new workflow, but at some point you're like, oh, I see why that's there. And I'm like, no, this is developer layout. I know this. I've done this. I'm guilty of this. This is just the thing, though. <laughs> So, yes, I will try to do my best to enunciate, uh, how did I screw it up properly? Uh, sign Lyra G. Sinalera dash GG. Good game. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a great editor. It's really improved over the years, too. I think one of the <laughs> biggest issues with help and support, man, like, I, you know, I, I start, if I work mm -hmm. on something, it's like, man, that took me more than like, 20 minutes to figure out. I make a video about it. Do the same for this, people, if you're using it, because like the guides for this program are nine years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. D yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got one more. And I suppose mm -hmm. uh, Frostclaw. Uh, and he's Fasty. talking about, uh, yes, uh, the mm -hmm. Raspberry Pi Poe. Uh, hello, I just wanted to let you know that as an almost electrical engineer, I can for sure confirm that the Poe voltage Would regulator that they are using... Would you hire an almost electrical engineer? Uh, <laughs> if he did it on the cheap, depending on what I was doing. Pedro, you know exactly where I was, like, depending on the discount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, so you're learning, right? This is a learning experience, right? Uh, so what's the discount right. like? <laughs> just joking. But yeah. I could for sure mm -hmm. confirm that the PO voltage regulator that they're using on that tutorial from last week is fairly cheap and low quality, and you can definitely burn the Pi or your house down. Uh, I would recommend buying an official PO hat for the Pi. Um, 
that's poe now i it now clicked in my brain power over e- um, wow that's halfway through it's like power over yes e- oh. <laughs> for the pie from the raspberry pi foundation this will avoid uh, the schrodinger's cat dilemma of not knowing whether your house caught fire while you were at work love the show good luck with your boots thank you frost claw mm. and uh yes Aww. the boots have arrived i showed them on the show <laughs> and you know Thanks, Frosty, for letting we call him Frosty. He's been one of our we? patrons, and <laughs> I call him Frosty. There we he's, go. he's a friend. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but Frostka, th- thanks for letting us know. And you know, uh, speaking of which, Frosty has an awesome Raspberry Pi and 3D printing YouTube channel, um, and makes really good videos. So you know, he he actually knows this from experience. <laughs> so he's been doing this. And a long I can time. see that because <laughs> yeah. POE can deliver what. 50 watts mm-hmm. 45 watts yeah so yeah you could do some damage <laughs> see what i'm going to do is include a link because i love you frosty jill's like ah you can find it yourself i'm gonna put a link in there so yeah, people can yeah. find your youtube channel yes we will <laughs> yes. <laughs> get on it jill yeah okay we'll we stuff, do. man i'm gonna get on to you uh, <laughs> Beautiful people, we get a bounce out of here. Uh, it's been awesome. Thanks for joining us live or after the fact, if you're watching us on YouTube or listening to us on the MP3s of the podcast, because we're effectively everywhere we can be. That's kind of brilliant. But we'll see you next week. Until then, yeah. let's. Uh, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> there, there it is. Oh, I get there we credits. go. <laughs> <laughs> Stone. Yeah, no, I blame the font. <laughs> the what? Pedro Mateus <laughs> and the Jill Bryant. Oh. Uh, uh, no, I blame the font on the uh, on Bradley because it doesn't do capitals. They're all the same size. So. It only does capitals. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it has advanced capital technology. Technology. So, yeah, Poe. It, it didn't register in my brain. It's like, oh, Poe. No, it was Poe. <laughs> yeah, Poe. It was Poe okay. all the way. What nineties <laughs> band was that? Nineties. Hmm. I can come up with a lot of eighties bands, but not nineties at the moment. <laughs> Well, uh, that's really good because Frosty is, is helping us uh, do the safety dance on that one. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> oh, I made a joke. <laughs> Frizzle! Yay! The humble thing works. Oh, that works. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you didn't do that on purpose. You just get knocked out, son. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Pod, yeah. That, I think that's what I was trying to think. Strider was pod, yeah. Then I kept on thinking about System of the Down for some reason. I was like, no, that's sod. <laughs> we had Foxy is Canseg Canseco Canseca S. <laughs> here, here, let, let me know when you recombobulate from twitch goes by the name Kansog Kanseg Og PC um, is that Ton and Fox Dog because I, I remember he had a unique name and I'm trying to remember what it was or one of the other blender developers hmm I saw that go by when we were doing the show. I'm like, oh, oh yes, a uh, person was talking, and uh, yes, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Can Seco uh, GBC? Yeah, can Vulcan the EV guy is doing it. Ask him. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not my problem. That, that, that's why I was thinking it might be one that's of. That's called delegation. It's part of business structure <laughs> management. It's like we have a guy on it. Mm-hmm. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I have access to their IRC channel, and I just haven't been in there a while, just because I wanted to talk to Ton. And I think I briefly did a while, like a year ago. Oh. <laughs> I got tongue-tied on the name. 
<laughs> Popey's in. A wild Popey appears. Yay, Popey! <laughs> yeah, someone uh, summoned the Popey. It was after mm -hmm. the story, though. It should have been before. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Aww. Twitch chat is yes, Frizo. Yay. It's, it's all an elaborate setup to spy on you and your humble purchases. Oh, yes. <laughs> because I had that moment of like, oh, I guess I did do that. All right. Um... <laughs> Yeah. I'd never seen that, so I just assumed that yeah, was that new, was so the... I went, oh, hey, that works. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That was so, cool. an elaborate trick. Everyone just randomly buys stuff, and let's see if it... <laughs> yeah. That's great, though, that Ven, that was a good... That was good thinking on that, to bring the Humble Bundle in as well. <laughs> Can you do that with the new Newegg affiliate link? <laughs> I don't even know what that is anymore, man. <laughs> or the Amazon. <laughs> Gee, I wonder if I could do it with Amazon, seeing as they own Twitch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it, it was, it's been good since they they bought Twitch and improved a lot of things. <laughs> Not to mention that we can subscribe with our free Amazon Prime account. That's always nice. That's nice. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't cost you and anything they... extra, and the uh, streamer gets a little bit of dosh. Yeah. Gets $2.50 <laughs> from each sub. Yep. <laughs> and um, the having, you know, that's really nice that they, you know, give you free goodies. It's mostly loot boxes and one on games, but sometimes they're good, like the Rocket League ones. <laughs> See, and then... I'm good just anywhere that, that, near that loot boxes in this free day stuff and age. They give you, it quits counting at 15 because that's what mine is at. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they actually include full games in there, which <laughs> are nice. I never clicked on it. Don't care. <laughs> Thank you, Fresno. But they, they have what? lots of the. Jeez. The... Oh, oh, no. Fresno. <laughs> he did something. Yes, he did. Yep. See, that, that's, he that... bought the Humble Linux things. bundle. Book bubble. <laughs> that ladies and gentlemen was like, wait a minute, I'm make stuff show up on the screen. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I think I'll let, yeah, this is the only scene I have that enabled on. Oh man. Mm. So we made it through that. I don't think I have any. Come at me, internet. Um I think we're going to be good on the recording. Cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Important. <laughs> let's hope so. If there is any issues, let's hope I can fix it. Frickin' Chrome Beta, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking. I'm still looking at HTOP because I don't trust it. <laughs> and to be fair, mm -hmm. the uh, swap usage did come down. It's now down to 1.3 gigs. Whatever's a noob, you don't need a swap file. <laughs> That's oh. what saved me from the third time. It's like, oh crap, I see. <laughs> Kids, enable the swap file. <laughs> Just make sure it's on a 5200 5, RPM on HDD. <laughs> Suffer for it. Yeah, that one's on a 7200, and yeah, I could see the chuggy chuggy as it started. <laughs> what do you do that, just for retro aesthetics? Why, why, why isn't your swap file on your NVMe drive? Because I can hear the hard drive when it goes tick, 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 tick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and... 
the, that's the, usually a good indication it's like what's happening like it's the gold <laughs> seal of approval in Pedro's brain he's like that's yeah. why <laughs> duh <laughs> and you know the space in the SSDs it's uh, also at a bit they're of a cheap. premium so. <laughs> yeah they're cheap now <laughs> the SSDs come on Brad they're like 20 bucks a piece yeah, now that, MX, that MX500 uh, one terabyte that I bought for this box to put all the Steam games in, it's down, um, it's like a hundred pounds now. I bought it at 115 mm -hmm. or 120, and it's down to a hundred. It's like, oh, okay, so you we're see, just free, doing so that now. You, you had me, man, <laughs> I thought you were trying to say something. Nah. It's just moon speak. What's the name of the movie with Brad's pit in space now? Something? I know it's something. This is obvious. Um, um, uh, I heard something a. about it, but I can't remember the name. Let's see about checking that out. <laughs> I think that might be interesting. I haven't seen any good films. The only thing I'm like remotely excited about is we got Rick and Morty next month. Yeah. Yep. That's going to be great for like 10 episodes, then four more years of waiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that long since season three. <laughs> These are going to be better because they have a contract now. <laughs> They're like, okay, you can keep making them because the wind up time on um, animations is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. For actually getting that shipped over and done. So. Mr. I I made it to like episode four or five of series one of Mr. Robot. I really liked it, but it's like uh, I made it to like episode three of season two. Oh, you got further than I did, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> it's like um, all right, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, the first season's like, okay, so they're actually talking about Linux, and that whole scene, it's like, oh, I see you're a GNOME user. I prefer KDE myself. It's like, all right, you have my attention. They got me with Raspberry Pi in the first episode. Yeah. That was <laughs> yeah, cool. that, that one was pretty good. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> all right, so right, Raspberry right. Pi. <laughs> it's like, this is an advanced microcontroller, and he's like, that's a Raspberry Pi. It's like, okay, well, you get, fair enough. Well done, well done, writing team. Well done, you have my attention. <laughs> You subverted my expectations right out of the gate, man. Because <laughs> we're done with the Preacher. I've n oh, The Expanse, but I only yeah. watched the first series of that. And I'm... Um, same here. I mm -hmm. finished the third uh, season only a couple of months ago, so very much looking forward to season four. Hmm. <laughs> Then Lord of the Rings, whenever that comes out, and that's gonna be the... And The yes. Witcher? <laughs> that I'm just gonna watch because people are angry that it's ba not it, it's based on the source material and not the video game. <laughs> Man, the uh the author of the books, he was pissed. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I gave them that license for peanuts, basically. Oh yeah. And now they've made billions on that series. He <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> went back to court. I think he got a little bit extra out of it. Okay. <laughs> Which, I'm not a hunt. I, I know that really sucks. I, I think it would be in the best. Um, it would show good face all the money they've made from Witcher for them to be like, yeah, we got this stupid sheep. But then again, they were taking the chance of turning that into a video game. Yeah. And the first one wasn't very good i just come out and say it. The best thing about it was that it used the Aurora engine, the same engine as Neverwinter Nights and Knights of the Old Republic. Mm. And the second one was better, but then there was that whole thing with um, virtual programming. And the third one, I haven't touched it yet, but Strider says it's good. <laughs> I saw Jordan stream a little bit of that. I was like, ah. This is, mm. I'll take it or leave it. That's on Netflix, right? Yeah. Mm. Welcome to 2019. Mm -hmm. Wait, which, which streaming service is that show? 
Uh, I'm really not looking forward to the days of Disney doing their own thing. It's like, yeah, all the Marvel series? We're hosting those now. It's like, I don't want to pay you money, Disney. I'll be honest. I'm yeah. going to cut him a check. <laughs> um, they're going to go hard. It's Disney. Yeah, it's probably going to be worth the uh, the asking price, but... The Mandalorian? Yeah, the Star Wars stuff, the uh, the Marvel stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be hard. No, it depends. It's all about... I think it's reasonably cheap, too. I know at first it's going to be stupid cheap because they're going to try to erode, like, Hulu and Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll enjoy it. Mm. There's like a YouTube TV one. That YouTube TV is like sixty dollars a month now. Ah, uh, that's that's Whoa. cute. Yeah, whenever mm. YouTube tries to promote one of their YouTube originals, it's like this one is now free. I don't care about YouTube originals. Thanks for that button, YouTube. Appreciate it, dude. I just wish you listened to it. <laughs> 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 we see you're trying to leave the YouTube Studio Creators beta. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every time I, I fill I, out I, this form for the umpteenth effing time to like, click skip. No. <laughs> uh, oh, no, no, no. And by the way, don't bother going back into settings and opting out there where it used to be. We've removed that. Mm -hmm. this, this is your future, whether you like it or not. <laughs> yeah. I'll make them love you. Man. That's annoying. Disenchantment? I've never seen that. I don't know what that is. I know the name, though. It's. Yeah, it's the uh, Simpsons slash Futurama. Oh, yes. I take series. it back. I have yeah. seen some of that. Yeah. 100%. El Camino. The, the, the second season wasn't bad. It was... It did, It doesn't have, like, the same um, staying power as the Simpsons and Futurama did, but it's not, it's not a bad show. Future almost definitely a show of its time because there, there just wasn't yeah. anything like that. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> I mean, we kind of had South Park, but I mean, the writing was a little, yeah, you know. was... Mm -hmm. Oh, I started watching that on Netflix because it's like, oh, South Park, it's on Netflix. It's like, oh, cool. <laughs> I Watch. watched the um, <laughs> one they did with um, the pissed off China, apparently. <laughs> Oh man! I Everyone's just fell out of China watching off. South Park. I have nothing against South Park, and you know, I, hey man, I watched the first decade. So, but yeah, apparently that's what it takes to get me to watch South Park episodes. I was like, "Well, you pissed off an entire country." It's been a minute, lads. All right, I'll mm -hmm. tune into that one. <laughs> I uh, admittedly, I had only seen like the tweet that they sent back. It's like, "We're sorry, not sorry." No. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I don't know. Matthew, what are you up to? When are you going to be in Canada? This weekend? Uh, or is that next weekend? Friday. I guess that's the point of the Friday. trip. He's making his way. <laughs> I don't try to mm. make sense of that boy anymore. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> <laughs> He's flying Friday. All right. Mm -hmm. Right on. Cool. You think they're going to let you in? <laughs> if they let it's him probably in France, from let Quebec him in or something. <laughs> <Canada. laughs> Aww. He'll be fine. He's got his passport. <laughs> I don't mean they'll let you in. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but no, I think you have a problem. Speak French, Strider. <laughs> Brush up on your French yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh. oh, you're from Quebec. All right. <laughs> Well, no, then, then he's got to be, like, hyper-pretentious French. Oh, he's like, I don't even want to deal with that. Just get him in. This is Strider we're talking about. <laughs> oh, okay. This French is okay. It's passable. <laughs> no, I was just talking about the hyper-pretentious bit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You don't need that to... If you're a U.S. citizen, you don't need that to come over Canada. Oh, sweetheart, you need a passport to get into Canada. You, mm -hmm. Absolutely, they will check your passport. Especially with his citizenship. Hmm. I know people have gotten in with that one, but you can drive into Canada, but flying. Yeah. Oh, it's flying like going is a to different... Mexico. If you're flying yeah. to Mexico, you need a passport now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. They Globe. specifically ask for the passport, at the airport, or some kind of photo ID. 
That's the other thing. If you have the new driver's license, I think you can get him with that. That like stupid driver's license. Uh, the, what is it called? A real ID? Oh, yeah. What's that? <laughs> hey, I, I guess we're all going to have to get that then. Yeah. Yes. I got it when um, I had my license renewed because it was going to be a huge pain in the ass and a hassle. It only took like half a day, which was like, winning. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. No, uh, Patrick, I realize that. But it's going to be a while before everyone transitions, you know. I'm going to probably... <laughs> you have to have it before the end of the year. <laughs> well, there's, they should send me something then because I don't have anything. <laughs> it's not my personal responsibility. <laughs> well, I don't drive, and that's the other thing. So it's just going to be, a, you know, an ID. Right. You're not going anywhere. It's not. No one's going to be like... <laughs> I'm always the last to get this stuff because I just have a, an ID, not a driver's license. But they did, they did, they actually sent me a mailer a few months ago saying that that's probably going to be happening. So, <laughs> it said probably on it, like it was optional. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, we're thinking about this. Just <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I got three passports, man. Welcome to my world. Jordan has two passports. Yeah, and that's the thing is my renewal isn't till next year, so that's probably I, I was assuming when they're gonna send it, send me the info. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, they do know. California ID last for everything. See, this this <laughs> conversation would change if you needed the real ID to buy sugar. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Ben. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. That's how I know that I don't get carded anymore. It's because I go to Tesco's and I pick up, like, energy drink. I boop it on the thing. It's like, authorization required. You need to be more than 25 years old to be able to buy this without uh, ID. And the, like, people who are usually manning the uh, self, uh, self-service, self they go in, they boop, they look at me, over 25. It's like, damn it! Every time! Oh. <laughs> Maybe they're just scared they don't want to offend a foreigner. Oh. <laughs> I was carded up until I was uh, 40, and then I guess, you know, they see my hair or blonde hair with gray in it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's mostly blonde, but. <laughs> what well, was cool? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, the other day um, when I was at the. At at the mall and you know how they have the the carts with like the skincare and stuff i got na nabbed What's that? i've heard <laughs> I got legends nabbed. of these malls I, I got nabbed by <laughs> one of the, the carts that i've i've actually bought lotion from them in the in the past but the guy came up to me and, and he he said oh you have sunspots on your arms i go yeah i grew up here at the beach <laughs> you know <laughs> so so he, uh, you know, was he goes well. I'll show you. We have a new lotion that'll that'll help that. And I go, okay, sure, I'll try it. And he thought I was 32 years old. He's like, he's like, you have really nice skin. And he goes, you must be like 31, 32. Jill. And I said, no. He was trying to sell you something. Oh, yeah. I know, I know, but he you actually have did. Messed with him. You'd be like, yeah, no, I should have been. no, he legitimately didn't believe me when I told him I was almost fifty. <laughs> so he goes, "Yeah, really nice skin. Whatever you're doing is working." <laughs> so. That's a very good sales tactic. Um, yeah, <laughs> getting people to, or just saying that nice things oh, to yeah. people. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not no, it sales. is. I, I worked retail for many years, <laughs> yeah, in the public. <laughs> but no, I he did was sales actually, for a while. I, yeah. did, it, and yeah. my boss is like, "But you gotta do this <laughs> and you gotta do that, so you want me to lie to people." Yeah, if that's what and it I takes. Hated it, that. Um, yeah. no, yeah. no. <laughs> that's the old thing, man. I mean, you can't do something. I mean, you can do. Listen, I'm not <laughs> against doing. If you gotta pay the bills, you gotta pay the bills, and nobody judging you. But yeah, yeah, stuff like that just makes you feel dirty. Like, yeah, yes. it, I know. That's why I would never do it. Yeah. <laughs> so. First job I had was Mervyn's department store. I was there six years in the children's department, and I got to deal with all the the Parents discarded. Parents finally picked you up. Then <laughs> 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 I got to deal with all the uh, you know the the baby diapers you know and stuff. I had to clean up all that stuff. 
but <clears throat> actually my my first boss there was wonderful so i really enjoyed the job because i he, he let me or like organize all the racks and everything and and put out the displays but you know a lot of the the parents would bring their kids to me and say well, does this look good on my daughter does this look good on my son and i was honest you know i said you know that particular dress is, is not the right style for your daughter but let, once you try this other one so i i did it with honesty and i got you know best employee of the month <laughs> because i was honest with my my uh, clients so <laughs> which way is a fan supposed to spin and <laughs> turn the, the opposite way in the winter. it depends on which direction the blades are yeah are thinking it, if it goes up one it goes yeah one way and it goes down i'm aware of that down yeah it just depends some manufacturers have them reversed the fan blades <sighs> It could be because of uh, convection. When mm -hmm. it's hot, you want the hot air to go up so it stays cooler at the bottom. When it's cold, mm -hmm. I guess you want more hot air to even out the temperature. I don't know. <laughs> Beats me, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, beautiful people. It is 4.30. It's past 4.30. Yes. Get a bounce out of here. Mm. Okay. Piecemeal a show together. So everyone have a good afternoon. And <laughs> let me close that up. Have a fun time. Tune in tomorrow for Jordan Stream. And yeah. on Friday for uh, Friday Night Foobar. And of course on Saturday for Linux Gamecast Weekly. Yeah. <laughs> Threatening. <laughs> All right, everyone. <laughs> yes. Bye, everyone. We love you. Bye. <laughs> Maybe if I'm doing the right button. I'm looking for the love button, clearly. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, who was it that posted the whole um, Elgato deck, uh, stream deck thing 